Well hi everyone and welcome back. Uh, before we get started on today's video I just want to send out yet another big thank you to all of the subscribers. Uh, I've just hit 700 which is way 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 above anything I ever imagined um, and the number's still uh, growing. So a really big thank you to all of you. I hope you're enjoying the videos. Uh, there's lots more to come. And of course you can request a video yourself. Um, ideally I'd prefer it if you went to my new forum which is there to complement this channel. And there is a section on there to request a video. Uh, today's video has been requested by Peter from Dublin in Ireland. So thanks to you Peter. And Peter wants to know how to remove the uh, mirror glass from the door mirrors. Um, now as part of that I'm going to cover a little bit more than that. We're going to look at actually removing the mirror in its entirety, look at the different types of mirror and we're going to look at how to test the heated mirrors before you put them back. Uh, especially useful if you've got any problems with your mirrors heating up. So uh, before we get started as usual we'll take a quick look at the tools you're going to need. So first of all a little pick tool almost certainly going to come in handy. The usual trim tool, just a nice flat plastic trim tool. It doesn't have to be a specific trim tool, but when you see what we use it for, you'll decide if that's the best tool for you. If you're going to be taking your mirror off, you're going to need a 10 millimeter ratchet. And finally, to do the testing, you're going to need a meter. Now for bought a new meter just for doing these videos now. The last one was a digital only meter and I realized that for those of you with analog meters you may not understand what you're looking for. So this little meter is able to show digital and analog readings at the same time. So I'll show you that uh, when we get round to doing the testing. So in order to remove the mirror, me personally I like to take the mirrors out um, with the entire unit on a bench. Reason is I've had a couple of them that have been fitted, no one connected the wires behind and as I've picked out the mirror it's dropped onto the floor and broken. However there is no reason at all why you cannot remove this glass in situ and that's what I'm going to do with this one. So the process is relatively simple and like everything it's only simple if you understand how to do it and I've seen many many people try to go in through the top by getting something under there and levering it out. And all that's done is broken the glass. You do not take these out from the top of the mirror assembly. So what you're gonna do is push on the top of the glass until the bottom comes to the edge there. Now there's two clips inside here and you've gotta get behind those clips. One's approximately here, one's approximately here. So if you get your trim to underneath and all you're going to do is twist it. And you will at some point feel the glass pop off. Like so. It's not broken, it's designed to do that. Now at the top you have two hinge assemblies. Now here's where you need to start being careful. Because this will come out all of a sudden and if you're not ready to catch it you may well drop it. So you're going to pull down at a slight angle and then it comes out like that. Now you can see behind, here's the two hook hinges and you have two clips here that you popped out first of all. And here is your wiring for the heated mirror. Now there's more than one version of this and in a minute we're going to look at the other version. So for this one, undo one wire off the two clips, then the other one, very carefully. It's quite a fragile assembly and easily broken. And now when this particular type, that plug will just pop off, usually. There we go. So that's how you get the glass off on this particular model. We'll show you the other model in just a moment. Before I go any further, there's something I forgot to mention and I've just been reminded. If you live in a country with creepy crawlies and nasty poisonous spiders, regardless of how big they are, for some reason they like to climb up behind the mirrors and nest inside the mirrors. So be careful if you're in a country with creepy crawlies that are going to bite you and do nasty things. Just check there's nothing behind there before you go sticking your fingers in. Um, now the next thing is we're going to take 
off the complete mirror assembly. And for that, some models are different to others. On this particular model, if you come in here, you'll see we've got a rubber bung there. On the other model, there isn't one. The other thing, of course, these mirrors can be moved manually. If it clicks really loudly, don't worry about it, it's quite normal. On another model, you won't get the loud click. It's just a, a gentle clicking into place. Now, as you can see, this model does not have the rubber bungs over the screws. This one does. And to get those off, you literally just use your little pick tool to get underneath and lever them off. Turn it all the way round, and then you do the one on the back. With those off, 10 millimeter ratchet or wrench as you may call it. Well, someone's done that up tight. Didn't intend that to come undone. one then click it all the way back around the other way and then you get access to the second one now remember to hold on to the mirror at some point it's just going to drop if you're not holding it So now we can lift the mirror assembly out. Now this may or may not look like yours. As I said, there are multiple versions of these mirrors, but they're all going to have a plug somewhere here. This particular type, just press in the tag and pull the plugs apart. Others you may need a pick tool to undo. So that's the mirror off. We're now going to cut the video, go over to the bench and look at the glass itself. So now we're at the bench and uh, this will make things a lot easier for me to show you in detail the way these things are connected, show you how to test them for the heaters and also show you how to put them back together. Now me personally I always prefer to put the glass in on the bench as well as take it out on the bench and you'll see why in a minute. So first of all this is a different type of mirror. You can see it's got a different connection to the one that we've just uh, taken off off the black car. Um, it makes no difference. They're exactly the same technique for taking it all apart um, except you will notice inside here the mirror is slightly different. So we're going to remove this one as well just so you can see what's inside. The process for removal is exactly the same as the one we've already done. You come along about six, uh, six centimeters from the edge, get your tool under it and just twist slightly, move along and twist the other side. Once it's loose, similar type of hinge assembly at the back there, just pull that through. Now we've got a different plug on this one. To release this plug, if you push it up out the top, twist it, and then it comes out of the holding mechanism. Now to separate the plugs, be very, very careful. It's very fragile up the top here. So to instead of doing it with your fingers and yanking it and risk doing damage, I prefer just to put a little pick tool in the hole and lever it out. They're a little bit tricky, but it will come in the end. This gives you better control over the mirror without the risk of dropping it. Now, if I put the two side by side, you will see that these are put together slightly different. The hooks at the top are slightly different and the clips at the bottom are slightly different. Personally, I prefer this type, but you won't have a choice. It is what it is. So that's what they look like inside. Now how to test them. The testing process is the same for both models. You're going to need a test meter. Now, whether you've got analog or digital, 
your settings are going to be the same. So you're going to connect your black wire to the common or negative terminal and you're going to connect your red one to whichever one has the ohms uh, symbol on there. Then you're going to need to set your meter. Now different meters will have different settings or different markings but what you're going to be looking for is either the tone symbol which is the most useful one. It may also have a diode symbol on there. If you don't have either of those then go to the lowest number of ohms which on this one is 200. But because I do have the uh, the uh, tone symbol I'm going to turn it to tone. Now this meter for some reason works in reverse. Normally it's um, needle will be at this end and as you connect the probes it will move across. For some bizarre reason this one works the opposite way, it goes to a full reading until you connect the probes and then it gives you the true reading which in this case is zero ohms or dead short circuit. So the heater assembly inside the mirror is effectively a short circuit. It might read 10 ohms, 5 ohms, something very, very small. So we're looking in this case for the needle to come all the way across and in the digital scale we're looking for a reading oh, looks like it doesn't like the sunshine we're looking for a reading as low as possible. So here's the two pins you're looking for on this type of mirror you want one probe on each pin and you see I've got the tone and the needles come across now unusually in this country today we're having a hot day, a very hot day and I've left this meter in the sun and I think that's why the digital range isn't showing. But you're going to be looking for a reading of just a few ohms. So that one is fine. I'll test this one as well while it's off. So this one also has a reading. And finally this one. Now for this one you're going to need some pretty small probes. I think mine are just about small enough to fit in there. You can see one wire goes on each side. Follow it through to the pins on this side. So now we connect to those two pins. And again we get the same sort of reading. So all of these mirrors are fine. I'll turn that off and I'm going to put that out the sun before it's completely destroyed by the heat. And now we'll look at putting the mirrors back together. We'll do this one first. It's pretty much the exact reverse of taking it apart. So connect up your cable. Go in sideways first of all and then turn it. And then you're going to slide it back into there to hold it. Always be careful of these two wires here they are very easily broken off so try to be careful with those now we need to get these two little um, hooking hinges uh, whatever you want to call them we've got to get them to go into these two slots here so I'm hoping the camera can get in nice and close on those we're going to slowly go down you'll see them hook over the two pieces there and we'll continue to go in and down and you'll feel it click into place so it won't pull off. Once you're in that position and you are absolutely sure both pieces are clicked in you can then slide the mirror down. You notice where these two clips are that's where your fingers need to be to put it back together. Now as you push on this the mirror is going to move so let it move all the way to its stopping point and now you can just push down on the mirror and you'll feel it click in and now your glass is back in ready to go. So that's that one. Now we'll do this model which was this one. It's more or less the same except your connections are different. So this one just pops straight on like so. Make sure it's firmly clicked into place. Run your wires behind the clips. Up around the top one there, like so. Now we're going to do the same as the other one. 
once again we've got the two hooks at the top that have to line up with those two bars there okay and then we'll push them in until it clicks now we'll bring it down I nearly got blinded then we'll push those two in and there we go mirror back in now you can see oh, we're going to get blinded you can see how simple that is but also it can be a problem if this is on the car and you're trying to work upside down and you can't see underneath it can often be really difficult to get those in and if you start forcing it and it's not properly lined up you're going to find that you break the glass very very easily so definitely in my opinion for the sake of two bolts take the mirror off the car and work on the a bench so that's it for now um should i screw this back on on film yeah go on let's quickly screw this back on let's go back over to the car so first off we reconnect the electric cables clip those into place through the hole two bolts And we'll put a little rubber cover back on as I said not all of them have the rubber covers so if you don't have them don't worry Okay, and the rubber cover back on. Job done, easy as that. So thanks Peter for requesting that video. I hope many of you will make use of it. It's a really nice thing to know and it can save you a lot of money and also help you to find problems with your heater mirrors. Um, so for now, that's today's video done. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Um, and don't forget to like the video and uh, give us a thumbs up and once you've subscribed if you click on the bell you will get uh, automatic updates of any new upcoming videos um, if you want to request a video preferably i would like it if you go onto my forum and request it through the forum but if you don't want to join the forum that's fine it's free to join by the way if you don't want to join the forum you can request it via the youtube channel um, so that's it for today thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next video